So what we're going to look at next is in, in conjunction in relation to orthogonality. Now that we've understood what orthogonality is, in fact, we can look at the concept of the projection theorem. So to give you an idea of the projection theorem, um, I, I'll start by saying that if we have a vector, okay, um, u, for instance, then this vector can be split up into two vectors, okay, uh, the vector w1. Okay, which we can say is along uh, this vector. Okay, this bigger vector. In fact, um, let's let's call this a. So, w w is this vector. Okay, w one is this vector, and a is the vector. So, what we're saying is this is a component of u along a. In fact, okay, and the way we get it is by by this it's called an orthogonal projection. So this angle here uh, geometrically would be a 90 degree angle. So um, we're, we're saying that here u belongs to R2 or R3, um, then in this particular case, the, the, this, ge this geometrical scenario is such that u and a are two vectors that we have, and u is the orthogonal projection onto uh, 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 w1, sorry, is the orthogonal projection of u onto a. Now, we define then another vector, w2. w2 is some vector that is, in fact, perpendicular to w1. So, these are the facts. These are the facts. Number one, we know that w1 and w2 are, in fact, orthogonal to each other. So, that's, um, uh, that uh, is zero, in fact. Okay? So, that's the first thing. The other thing we can note from this, um, the way it's drawn here, is that u, okay, is equal to w1 plus w2 by the by the geometrical definition of addition. It's clear from this diagram that that's that's what would happen if you add w1 and w2, you end up with with u. So those are two facts that are clear from this diagram. Now, now. The question is, we want to be able to find this w1. If we find w1, w2 is easy enough to find because u is something we already know and a is something we already know. So here's our objective. Somebody tells us, gives us two vectors, the vector u, and they say, well, I want to know what part of u is in, is, uh, you know, is, is projected onto a or is along a. So if you remember, I'll take you back, those of you who've studied physics and, and have studied, um, and you would have studied this in, in math as well, is the resolution of forces, okay, or resolution of a vector into its horizontal and vertical components, which is a u cosine theta and u sine theta, if you remember, okay, where u would be the vector. Now, in such a case, um, uh, or force, or whatever it is that's resolved into it, this is the similar a similar idea, but only taken to the next level, which is, Instead of saying that the horizontal component of the vector, what if we wanted to know what component of, say, for instance, the velocity of uh, in, an object goes in a certain direction? What part of it? So what portion of the force? So if you're applying, so here's something. So here's an object, and, and, and you know, there is a force vector here. We know this is F, okay? Then what if I wanted to know how much of this force is going along this direction? or how much of the force is going along this, or how much is going along this. Not just what's the uh, vertical and what's along the horizontal, but rather all these directions, even here, or here, or anywhere. So if I wanted to know what portion of the force is going along any of these directions, we can use this idea of the projection theorem. So, so now I'll go back to here. So our, our vector here is u, and we're looking at its orthogonal projection. This is w1 along a, all right, so along a. Now, what are the knowns in this case? u and a are known to us. We will be given u and a, but we have to find w1 and w2. So let's try to see how we can possibly uh, do that. One thing we can see is there is a relationship between w1 and a. Clearly, you see that w1 is k, uh, some scalar quantity, some scalar version of a. So if it's smaller, then k would be a fraction less than 1. In this case, it appears to be that visually. However, it doesn't have to be. A could be, uh, it could just be up to here. So, I mean, um, it could be smaller and it could be just up to here, for instance. In this case, it is bigger. So, but k takes care of that. The multiplication by the scalar k takes care of that. So w1 is in fact ka. So now, 
uh, if we note that, uh, if we note that, that's one important relationship because then we're getting closer to figuring out what W1 is. So W1 now is within K of, uh, of A, in fact. But we still would like to know what this K is. So let's play a little bit with some of these relationships that we have here. If uh, we note that, another thing we note here, for instance, is that clearly W2 uh, dot A is equal to zero as well. Okay, w2 dot a is also equal to zero. Now, let me try to do something here, which is the following. Let's go with this relationship. u is equal to w1 plus w2. That's clear. That's from, from here. Now, what is w1? It's ka. So let's say u then is equal to ka plus w2. Now, let's take the dot product uh, of this with a both sides so so that means that u dot a is equal to k into a dot a which becomes the norm of a okay plus a dot w2 which is in fact zero because of this all right so therefore this implies that k in fact is u dot a and this is norm, sorry, this is norm of a squared, divided by the norm of a squared. So that's a very important, that's important. We've got a result here. So we figured out what k in fact is. k is u dot a over norm of a squared. A, u and a are known to us. We already know what u and a are. So therefore, we figured out what k is. And if we know what k is, we've also figured out what w1 is in fact. So let's just put that information together here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say W1, okay, we call that the projection, okay, of U onto A. So proj UA, we call it proj UA. And it is defined as basically the K that we have here, which is U dot A divided by the norm of A squared times the vector now notice that this um, notice here that this quantity is a scalar. It's going to be a number. Be aware of that, please. Okay, u dot a is a scalar quantity. The norm is a scalar quantity. So therefore, this whole thing together is a scalar quantity. So the result proj a u is a vector overall because it's a multiplied by this quantity. Now once we know this, uh, all that remains is to figure out what um, what the other one is, which is w two. And it's very simple to figure out W2 because W2 is in fact, all right, uh, it would be the vector which we will call, in fact, U minus, U minus proj A U, okay? That would be your W2, okay? So we know what it is by simply subtracting this off. So that is known as the, this is known as the projection theorem. So it is the this this vector here that you see here is the component uh, a com vector component. Okay, it's called the vector component of uh, u along the vector a. All right, and this is this is the vector component of u orthogonal to a. This one here is the vector component of u orthogonal okay to a all right which we know in theory because as you remember there you see that that that, that we 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 know that to be a result and you can see that here as well okay that there w2 is orthogonal to a all right okay let's do an example Here's an example. Let's say we have these two. Uh, we want we have the vector u is one one two and the vector a is three two two, and we want to find uh, the orthogonal projection or the vector component of u along a. Okay. So and and we want to find the um, the vector component of u orthogonal to a as well. So if you want to do that, we will follow this procedure, which means that what we're looking for is projection of u onto a, which in this case, um, as you remember, is that formula up there. So in order to calculate this, uh, which I'm just going to rewrite for you here, it's in fact um, some calculations are required. So let's do the bits and pieces. So first of all, we'll have to calculate u dot a. 
So u dot a in this is in this case is going to be three plus two plus four. So it's equal to nine. We need the norm of a norm of well, norm of a squared. Norm of a squared is going to be in fact nine plus four plus four. So that's uh, 17 in fact, okay? So it's nine and 17, so that means that proj uh, au is in fact uh, nine over 17 multiplied by the vector a itself, which is three, two, two. So this is the component, this is the component of u along the vector a. And of course the, the orthogonal one is simply going to be u minus proj a u. So that's just going to be what's u. Uh, just, there it is. So let me just write these down for you here so you can see what's going on. So we have 1, 1, 2 minus uh, take everything inside so you'll get 27 over 17 comma uh, 18 over 17 comma 18 over 17 okay so let's just if you do that um, if you do that that turns out to be so that turns out to be uh, basically minus 10 over 17 uh, minus 1 over 17 and and we have 16 over 17 Okay, so the, uh, just to simplify a little bit, we can just say that we can take out the 1 over 17, and that leaves us with minus 10, minus 1, 16. But anyway, that would be the vector that is, in fact, um, orthogonal uh, to um, uh, A. So we can check that. In other words, if we were to take the dot product of U minus proj AU and dot product with A, that would give us in fact 0 and you can check that because you get 1 over 17 times minus 30 minus 2 plus 32 which is equal to 0 so that is correct that's what we expect so that is uh, the projection theorem and an associated example of the projection theorem okay uh, quickly let's look at two ideas that follow um, quite naturally the Pythagoras theorem and Rn so if we have two vectors that are orthogonal to each other, let's say this is u and this is the vector v, uh, clearly u dot v is known and it's of course zero. Uh, they are orthogonal to each other. What we can say then is this vector, which of course is geometrically u plus v, so the norm of u plus v in fact squared is the u plus v dot product with u plus v okay so that turns out to be norm of u squared plus two times u dot v plus the norm of v squared but u dot v is actually zero so that means this is equal to just the norm of u squared plus the norm of v squared which is the familiar Pythagoras theorem and in fact, that's extended now to Rn, because that is true for all vectors in Rn. Two definitions that I would like to just leave with you, don't require a lot of explanation, is the, in R2, in R2, the distance between, uh, the distance D, okay, from between the point P0, which is, say, X0, Y0, okay, and uh, to the line, ax plus by plus c equals zero. So the distance d is in fact very easily calculated. It is the absolute value of ax zero uh, plus by zero plus c, the size absolute value of that divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. Similarly, uh, in, in a similar way in R3, in R3, the distance d, okay, between the point p0, which is x0, y0, z0, 
and the plane in fact ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to zero okay is simply the distance is given as the absolute value of just extending it by one further dimension so logically you would expect it to be plus d sorry plus d absolute value divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared okay that's just a uh, reference for your uh, for your reference just keep this in mind it is a useful little result you stop there